Hello everyone, and welcome to the Quantpedia Explains Trading Strategies video series. Today, we will speak about the momentum strategies. Uh, hello, hello. Uh, today I would like to touch on the subject of cross-sectional momentum strategies. Sometimes they are called rotational strategies or relative strange uh, investment strategies. Uh, the momentum strategies are one of the most popular uh, investment styles. Uh, if we type the uh, keyword momentum into the Quantpedia, uh, we have like, I don't know, nearly 150 strategies that are related to this, uh, to this keyword. So, uh, let me see, yeah, nearly 150. Uh, so, momentum strategies or cross-sectional momentum strategies, they work nearly in every asset class. Uh, among assets, uh, among the sectors, uh, in currencies, in stocks, in country indexes, uh, in anomalies or in trading systems, in commodities. Uh, we can combine the momentum with different, with other different anomalies. We can combine uh, the momentum with temperature, with value, uh, with seasonality, with reversal, uh, etc. Et so, uh, cross-sectional momentum strategies are one of the uh, cornerstones or one of the uh, founding stones of uh, trading strategies. Uh, and today I would like to uh, show you a few very easy examples uh, and show you how, how they work uh, and then in the end we will try to explain why, uh, why they work. So, uh, as an example, I choose uh, the trading strategy that we call Momentum Asset Allocation Strategy. Uh, it's uh, again the strategy that uh, uses the, the rotation momentum uh, trading system. And we are trying to uh, search the best asset class uh, that uh, we should invest into. So it means uh, when we have an investment universe that consists of multiple asset classes uh, that can be covered easily by ETFs, uh, we are uh, um, periodically rebalancing the portfolio and picking uh, the uh, assets for ETFs with the best uh, which are the best performing uh, out, of the investment uh, out of the investment universe into our uh, investors, into our portfolio. Um, now, so that's that's uh, cross-sectional momentum. Uh, why does this cross-sectional momentum works? Uh, there are a lot of the reasons. Uh, one of the reasons uh, is uh, probably connected to economy. So, uh, different asset classes are uh, differently sensitive to business cycle, uh, so uh, we can rotate uh, between the multiple assets or between different different sectors uh, and pick those that are the most correlated to the current or that are probably the best for the current business cycle. Uh, we can do it via some economic calculation or how or we can do some uh, use some macro. Uh, indicator indicators uh, to pick the correct asset or pick the correct sector, or we can do it uh, numerically by just uh, looking at the past performance and uh, sort the assets based on the past performance. Uh, and um, mm, the research shows that just by using the past performance uh, is enough to have the profitable trading strategy. Uh, so, the, tra uh, the trading strategy that uh, I'm presenting is built on the paper from, again, from in the paper uh, from Maven Faber, uh, called Relative Strength Strategies for Investing. Uh, the paper is freely available in, uh, I will show you the equity group. The paper is uh, freely available at SSRN, once again, uh, so we can download it. Uh, the, the Relative Strength Strategy, so there are multiple strategies in the, in the paper. Uh, relative strength strategies uh, among the asset classes, the relative strength strategies among the um, among the investment sectors like or stock sectors, uh, plus some combinations with the trend filters, etc. Uh, I will I will show you two of the strategies and then we can uh, discuss uh, the beh behavioral reasons for uh, the momentum momentum strategy. So let let me open the paper. Uh, so, uh, at the beginning, the maybe favorite showing uh, which data uh, he use, uses for, uh, for his research. 
So he is using the time frame from July 1926 until December 2009. Uh, but we have the auto sample test, uh, which is until 2022, so until the current date. Uh, we can see that the performance is still uh, very nice uh, for this title of, of the strategy. Uh, so uh, at the beginning, the Maven Faber is showing what is the average performance of uh, each individual uh, sector. And uh, as we can see, they are pretty correlated, but the, there is not one hundred percent correlation between between all of the sectors. And now, uh, what we can do is that we can uh, periodically rank uh, or do the ranking of the individual investment sectors, uh, and we can take a look what is the performance, and we can create the buy rule so that system invests only in top X sectors or top X. Uh, assets out of the investment universe. We will later uh, take a look how does it look like with the, uh, if we invest into top uh, top assets instead of top sectors. Uh, so here we can see. So uh, our what is the benchmark? So our benchmark is uh, equal weighted portfolio of all of these sectors. We can see that the equal weighted portfolio of all of the sectors has 10% performance with 18% uh, standard deviation. So the sharp ratio is 0 0.45 with 80% uh, with over 80% maximum drawdown. Now, what does it happen, or what does, uh, what happens if we buy only the top performing sector based on one month relative, or, or based on the past one month performance? So we see that if we buy top top two or top three or top four sectors, uh, we increase the performance, uh, we, but we have we have nearly the same standard deviation, uh, so we increase the Sharpe ratio. Uh, it doesn't matter if you use the one-month or three-month uh, calculation window or six-month calculation window or uh, nine or twelve-month calculation window. So we still see that uh, our rule by picking the top or the best performing uh, sectors, investing only in those top performing sectors, outperforms uh, the equally weighted uh, investment uh, So that's um, that's how does it look like. Uh, here we have it in a in a chart form. So here is our buy and hold benchmark. And here are our equity curves when we invest in uh, top one or two or three uh, sectors out of out of the investment universe. Uh, of course, uh, the if we invest only in the top one one sector, our performance is probably is usually the best. But it's also the performance the equity curve is, is usually the most volatile. So uh, it's better to invest into I don't know top one third. On, or top uh, one fifth or one fourth of the investment universe, so not to invest on just in just one uh, ETF or in just one sector or one asset class. Uh, it's better to have a diversification. We have a little lower performance, but a uh, higher Sharpe ratio because we have a lower volatility and lower drawdown. Now the same, the uh, same idea uh, as we have on. Um, uh, we can use the investment universe. Uh, that we can use momentum to sort uh, uh, sectors uh, can be applied also among the asset classes. So we can use the uh, relative strength or cross-sectional momentum rule and we can try to pick the best performing assets. So once again, we have a uh, investing universe that consists of five assets, 2500, uh, the foreign stocks, 10-year uh, government bonds, uh, commodities and the real estate uh, rates. Uh, the backtest at the, uh, for this strategy is uh, from 1973 until 2000, uh, 2009. And uh, once again, we see that uh, buying the whole performance of equally weighted portfolio or equally weighted uh, assets has 46% uh, uh, drawdown and share ratio 0.41. Uh, how we can improve? Uh, as we can see, once again, all of the assets they are not correlated 100% to each other, so uh, we can try to find uh, which of the assets are the best performing uh, and invest only in those uh, best performing assets. Uh, once again, here we see uh, the or the calculation tables. So we can so it doesn't matter or it doesn't it is not so important if you use one month relative strength or three month or six month or I don't know twelve month uh, twelve month relative strength rule. Uh, uh, if we buy the top one performing or top two uh, or top three assets out of the universe, uh, our um, so our portfolio has a better performance uh, than buy and hold benchmark. Uh, uh, the same same volatility, uh, higher share ratio, 
and uh, small, usually the smaller, smaller drop down. Now we can even do the combination, so we do not need to pick uh, what, are, what is the best uh, period for a signal calculation, uh, whether there is one or three or six months. Uh, we can calculate all of the five, uh, one, three, six, uh, nine, and twelve other relative strength, and we can combine all the signals together, uh, and we can build the um, we can build the diversified portfolio that's built out of the multiple signals. Uh, so, for example, if we pick uh, top two uh, top two stress, top two assets, uh, and uh, from from this one universe. Uh, and we combine the portfolio out of, of those five signals, uh, we have the uh, significantly higher performance than buy and hold portfolio, uh, a little higher standard deviation, but the Shiber ratio in, is nearly twice, and uh, the maximum drawdown is around, I don't know, 30% lower uh, than 46% drawdown of buy and hold portfolio. So, uh, that's the logic behind uh, and here the last chapter. So that's uh, that's the logic behind the um, relative strength or cross-sectional momentum, or sometimes called rotational strategies. So the logic is that uh, we are uh, calculating what is the past performance of each individual asset or each individual sector or each individual currency or commodity in our portfolio. We select the best top. Uh, the top performing into our portfolio and we rebalance on a periodic basis. Uh, now the question is why this is this strategy working? So the first uh, first the reason was the economic reason as I mentioned before. So uh, uh, by uh, doing the by picking the best performing sectors we are uh, periodically rotating into the assets uh, that are the strongest at the moment so they are probably the mostly sensitive, sensitive to the current business cycle uh, and because uh, the rotation of the business cycle takes a long time uh, we can uh, reap the profit by holding for a short time the asset that's the most performing and that's, that's the most sensitive for the current state of the uh, business cycle. Uh, so uh, that's sometimes called the sector rotation so when we uh, rotate among the sector but uh, in the case of uh, relative strategies, we are not using the economic data or some macroeconomic indicators. We are using the past performance of the sector or past performance of the asset in the case of uh, asset, asset rotation. Uh, and now another, another reason for uh, why the momentum or cross-section momentum strategy is working is sometimes explained uh, via, uh, via the beha behavioral momentum. Uh, so, uh, behavioral momentum is a theory uh, or, uh, of, uh, in quantitative analysis of behavior from, uh, from psychology. Uh, it's like behavioral metaphor based on physical momentum. So, it means that we as a people, we have a resistance to change. So, it means uh, that uh, if there is a strong trend, behavioral trend, uh, so there is some asset that is very strongly uh, trending or some sector that is very strongly, uh, very strongly trending, we as a people tend to buy this uh, this asset and we uh, or this sector and we uh, do not like to change uh, from this sector to another sector or from this asset to another asset uh, and the continuous buying uh, and continuous inflow of the money into the current sector and or into the current asset causes uh, the trends in the, in, uh, in assets and via the uh, relative strength strategy we can uh, keep this trend. Uh, so, uh, uh, so momentum is often explained uh, via the quantitative behavior of finance, uh, and the reason for momentum are often the cognitive, cognitive biases uh, that are uh, mm, coming from us, from the humans. Interested? Then pick another video to learn more or subscribe to Quantpedia Pro and try how our analytics and reporting significantly save time spent on quantitative research.